Next, let's look at a more comprehensive view of the current fintech landscape by breaking it down into different categories. First, let's focus on online payments and digital wallets. The use of mobile devices and digital wallets for making payments, transferring money, and managing finances. Now, payment processing and money transfers in fintech are technologies and services that allow for electronic transactions and the transfer of funds. Payment processing involves accepting, verifying, and authorizing electronic payment made through methods such as credit cards, digital wallets, and mobile payments. Money transfers involve moving funds from one individual or entity to another, either domestically or internationally, through digital platforms such as mobile apps, online portals, and ATMs. And fintech companies such as PayPal, Stripe, and Square are looking to disrupt the traditional banking industry by offering faster, more secure, and convenient ways of payment processing for those consumers who choose to use their Visa or MasterCard or even UnionPay. And while on the subject of digital wallets, fintech companies are looking to go beyond traditional digital wallets, which only allow you to store and transfer different fiat currencies. For example, companies are now focusing on cryptocurrency wallets, which allow you to hold cryptocurrency coins, tokens, as well as NFTs. The next category is digital banking, and that's something that's quite common and ubiquitous nowadays, but it is a form of fintech where companies look to disrupt traditional banks by providing services such as account opening, loans, and investment management through the use of digital platforms and mobile applications. Now, in order to make these banking services faster, more convenient, and accessible for consumers, a lot of these fintech companies aren't necessarily traditional brick and mortar banks. Although many traditional banks do purchase or create these smaller digital banks in order to access a certain market demographic. For traditional banks that either own or are affiliated with a digital bank, they may even allow users of the digital bank to access the ATM network or branches for an additional fee. Ultimately, with digital banking, consumers can perform a wide range of financial transactions, and they can do it from the comfort of their own home or on the go using their mobile devices. Digital banking offers several benefits for financial institutions, namely lower operational costs, improved customer experience, and increased efficiency through the automation of many manual processes. A drawback is that they don't all have deposit insurance compared to traditional banks. Deposit insurance protects your savings if the entity holding your money fails, as we saw with SVB Bank in 2023. The next major category of fintech firms we see out there belong to alternative funding or financing. Now, this is a non-traditional method of raising capital that aren't loans from banks or financial institutions. Alternative funding encompass various forms of financing, including crowdfunding, peer-to-peer -peer lending, venture capital, and angel investing, among others. Now, all of these bypass traditional financial intermediaries, and the methods of alternative financing have become increasingly popular in recent years due to advancements in technology and changes in the financial industry making it easier for individuals and startups to access capital. Firstly, let's talk about online lending or peer-to-peer -peer lending, P2P lending. These are very similar in nature as they both involve loans that are funded by investors, but the source of funding is different. Online lending is usually funded by an online lending company, while peer-to-peer -peer lending is funded by individual investors. Online lending platforms provide loans directly to borrowers with more flexible terms and potentially faster approval times through using artificial intelligence. P2P lending, on the other hand, refers to a specific type of online lending where individual investors fund loans to individual borrowers. Borrowers or lenders may also participate in micro-lending, 
where borrowers can obtain smaller loans compared to alternatives. P2P lending is subject to a higher chance of default since most of the loans are typically unsecured, which means there's no collateral. Examples of P2P lending fintech firms are Lending Club, Prosper, Upstart, and Funding Circle. Another type of alternative funding is crowdfunding, and that's a method of raising funds from a large number of people, typically via the internet, for a specific project or venture. There are different types of crowdfunding, including reward-based crowdfunding, equity-based crowdfunding, and debt-based crowdfunding. In the context of fintech, alternative funding and crowdfunding have become important sources of financing for startups and small businesses that may not have the collateral or credit history to secure traditional loans otherwise. Fintech companies are leveraging technology to connect borrowers with lenders and investors, making alternative financing more accessible and efficient. Companies that have specialized in this sort of practice might include Kickstarter, Indiegogo, GoFundMe, and Crowdfunder. Now here's a convenient table which outlines the key differences between the three styles of alternative funding that we just discussed. Notice that online and P2P lending platforms both assess the creditworthiness of borrowers, whereas crowdfunding platforms generally tend to rely on the borrower's business plan. Another thing to notice is the profit potential for P2P and crowdfunding can be high, whereas online lending is low. This is because the online lending company knows exactly how much they will receive for lending a certain amount. When it comes to P2P and crowdfunding, the lender may receive much better rates, or sometimes even equity in the case of crowdfunding. Next is investment management, which refers to the professional management of securities and other assets on behalf of clients, typically with the goal of achieving a specific investment objective. In the traditional investment management model, clients work with a human financial advisor to make investment decisions. Robo-advisors, on the other hand, are digital platforms that use algorithm and artificial intelligence to automate the investment management process. They provide automated investment management services to clients, including portfolio construction, asset allocation, and rebalancing, without the need for human interaction. Robo-advisors typically use a risk questionnaire to determine a client's investment profile and then use that information to build and manage a diversified portfolio of low-cost exchange-traded funds, called ETFs. Examples of these robo-advisors include Betterment, Wealthfront, Robinhood, and Schwab Intelligent Portfolios. Next, let's talk about Personal Financial Management Tools, or PFMs. These are technology-based solutions in fintech that help individuals manage their finances and make informed financial decisions. These tools aim to provide a comprehensive and user-friendly overview of an individual's financial situation, including their income, expenses, and investments. These tools may often connect to a user's financial accounts, such as bank accounts, credit card, and investment accounts to automatically gather and categorize financial data. Some common features of PFM tools include budgeting and expense tracking, account aggregation, saving and debt management. They also provide users with insights and recommendations to help them make informed financial decisions, such as creating and sticking to a budget, reducing debt, and saving for future goals. PFM tools come in various forms, including mobile apps, desktop software, and browser-based platforms, and they can be used by individuals with a range of financial goals and investment profiles, from those just starting to build their savings to those with complex financial portfolios. Examples would be Mint by Intuit, Personal Capital, YNAB, and Acorns. Another area of fintech is accounting and tax automation, where companies are using technology to automate and streamline traditional accounting and tax processes. 
they use software and other digital tools to help perform tasks such as bookkeeping, expense tracking, invoicing, and financial reporting. Ultimately, the goal of this fintech sector is to help make processes faster, more accurate, and less prone to errors, so that we can free up time for business owners and tax professionals to focus on more strategic activities. Tax automation involves the use of technology to automate the tax compliance process, from calculating tax liability to preparing and filing tax returns. This can include software that automates the calculation of taxes based on financial data, as well as e-filing systems that allow businesses and individuals to file their tax returns electronically. Some of the key players in this industry are Intuit's QuickBooks, Ciro, TurboTax, as well as Wave.